The thoughts and reactions I had while watching this film, well, they're eerily similar to the same feelings I had when watching Drive. And it's probably going to be a case where my opinions are going to be pretty much the polar opposite of what every other review is, reviewer is going to be saying about the film. With that said, let's get started with this week's episode of Romney's Reviews. It was only a matter of time until I had to look at a film presented by the Weinstein Company. I mean, it's award season, it's only natural that he's going to be presenting quite a few different films in order to get them awards nominations, as well as some solid wins. Oscars aside though, this film really feels like one of those art house indie films, but unlike Drive where it was, well, advertised as a high-end action film, at least this one, you ha have an easier time knowing what you're getting into because it's a little more upfront with what it's about, and not as misleading as the trailers for Drive were. And granted, I did watch some of the news reports where they interviewed the director and the cast, particularly on Nightline where they explored some of the themes that were tackled in the movie, so they may have colored my perceptions a little bit, but hopefully it's for the better and allowing me to give a more fair review of this film as a whole. Now, the first thing that I really noticed with this film is that, well, there's quite a bit of Tarantinoing going on. Now, for those of you who don't know, Tarantinoing is basically where two characters in a scene or having a conversation and the dialogue doesn't move the story forward nor does it provide exposition it's basically to kind of help you gauge the personality of the characters based on the random chit chat they have with each other and it can when used right it can create a more fleshed out world but when used wrong it can make certain scenes feel pointless and i mean one or two scenes of tarantinoing are fine but when you have a character whose sole purpose seems to be tarantinoing it just makes a lot of those scenes feel pointless. Speaking of, well, pointless, a lot of the CNN and C-SPAN footage that is put in the film, I mean, I know this is supposed to be set during the time of the recession when it really started to hit the country really hard, but essentially, it's basically beating you over the head with it. I mean, the audio from the clips almost overpowers parts of the scene. It doesn't blend well. I mean, you have your character, the character walking through a subway, but then you hear the audio with this like annoying echo that's kind of almost drowns other natural noises out. It's not diegetic. It just feels like, hey, hey, get it? Get it? This is about the economy. Get it? Get it? And it's just, it feels really annoying. And the sound mixing for those was not very good. It really wasn't. Because again, it was just basically trying to beam you over the head with the fact of what era it's set in. I mean, seeing the visual stuff with like the billboards and seeing the people celebrating Obama's election, if they just went with that alone and then the clip of Obama's speech at the end, that would have been fine. They could have taken out all the inserted C-SPAN and CNN clips and it would have made things a little more smoother or just have it be where they were kind of silent or at least have it sound like they're actually coming from the TV in the actual location and not just someone playing around in Final Cut dropping audio tracks in because they sound cool. That was the one of the major things that really bothered me while watching this film, is that it was essentially trying to beat you over the head about the film's purpose and the film's premise. Now, to the film's credit, it does do a decent job with the visuals. I mean, there are some pretty cool shots and some pretty cool compositional techniques, but there are times in the film where it feels like the, some of the shots were done by a completely different director or a completely different DP, there's just a bit of a style clash. It's not even an artistic style clash, like in, say, Edward Scissorhands or, well, yeah, that's the only extreme example I can think of, but it's not really a, like a style clash that's planned. It just feels like, oh, hey, here's a bunch of cool shots we came up with. Let's make a movie around these types of shots. That's the biggest thing that it felt when watching the cinematography in this film. Now, the story, and I understand I went backwards on this, going through the technical and then jumping into the story, but really, the technical aspect was where the film really suffers. I mean, the story seemed interesting, but even the way it, the story is executed was a bit iffy. I mean, to be honest, I got bored. I got bored partway through the film. I was literally starting to fall asleep at certain times and fighting to stay awake. And which is why I said this is eerily similar to when I watched Drive, because the same thing happened. I got bored, I started to fall asleep, I had to fight to stay awake. The story, although it's pretty engaging, it, it feels long. And there's just a lot of scenes that really feel pointless. It's like they emphasize 
wrong parts of the whole thing. And again, I've not read the original book this is based on. I do not know all the details, but as someone who was watching it, there were just some things that just feel pointless, that just feel needlessly drawn out. It was just a case of, yeah, let's act. It's kind of a case where you want them to actually focus on what's going on, or at least choose just one avenue to focus on, because they kept bouncing focus between the people who robbed the card game and Brad Pitt. Those are the two things they kept focusing, bouncing between. If they at least, at least had like the people robbing the card game be an, a prelude and then focused on Brad Pitt through the rest of the film, I think that would have made it a lot better because it at least would have kept focus where it should have been. Uh, especially with the way they advertise and how Brad Pitt's essentially the main character. That really would have been the better approach for the film. Now, in the case of the acting, there's not much to really say, because like I said, most of the focus is on Brad Pitt, and well, he does a pretty good job with this role. The actors do a really good job with this role. It's just the case that the film mostly suffers because of the structure of it. So, although there's, there's some pretty good bits in here, I mean, the first Tarantinoing scene that we see with... His last name's Gandolfini, but I don't know his first name. The guy who plays the second hitman, that scene is pretty good because it's just like okay well they're just getting a little bit of development but then it just it drags on when they try to bring more scenes like that and kind of really just there's just a lot of fluff that's the best way I can describe it it feels like there was a lot of fluff in this film I mean if it was it was like they couldn't decide what they were focusing on now again the best bits that I can say are like the first Tarantino ink scene some of the shot choices are pretty good as well as the final scene, which pretty much the final scene is actually like the best scene in the film where it has like the most quotable stuff and actually gets the point of the entire film across. But it's almost just a case of where it's almost not even worth it just to see those few bits and pieces that are actually good. So overall, this, this film was pretty boring. I mean, if you're a hardcore cinephile, you may enjoy it. If you're someone who's more into the art of film and really into the like more auteur directors, You'll probably enjoy it, but as someone who's more of a mainstream moviegoer, I didn't really like it that much. And chances are not a lot of mainstream moviegoers are going to like it either. With that said, on my personal scale, and again, it's probably going to be the polar opposite of what all the other filmmakers are saying, just like when I reviewed Drive, but I'm giving Killing Them Softly a 3 out of 5. It's got some good bits, don't get me wrong, but it just, it has its flaws. Like, its flaws are pretty big. Its structure is flawed, there was not a lot of consistency with certain shots, and just some scenes just dragged on way too long. But that's pretty much all I have to say about this film, is that it's a film. That's all I can really say about it. I mean, if you're a hardcore like film student looking to study certain shots and certain composition techniques, then this is the film for you. So you can, you can pick up on some pretty good stuff that you can try to apply in your own films, but as someone who's watching movies to be entertained, who's basically an average Joe moviegoer person, wait for it to be in a dollar theater if you're really curious. Don't pay full price. That's all I'm saying. And that's it for this week's episode of Romney's Reviews. Since the paper is ending its run for the semester, I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break. Not too long of a break, mind you. It's just that, well, finals week is coming up, and I've got a lot of homework to catch up on. So, I guess the next film that I'll probably be reviewing, well, I don't know. If there's something that comes out the week after finals, then I'll probably review something there, but for a definite, for sure review, it's gonna basically be, it's basically gonna be either Les Mis or Django Unchained or both. Most likely Les Mis, but you, I'm just keeping my options open. Point being, I'm going on vacation for a while. See you next time. Yeah, for those of you who are curious, I reviewed Drive for my college newspaper, and I had a lot of the same impressions. I got bored, started to fall asleep while watching Drive, and there was just a lot of stuff in the film that a lot of people say, oh, it's so, like, it's the prime example of cinematic storytelling, and I'm just like, no, it isn't. It isn't. I mean, if it wanted to tell a story with just the visuals, tell the story with just the visuals. Don't try to put dialogue into it, and... A lot of people think, oh yeah, pauses and dialogue are natural, but the pauses from Ryan Gosling's performance, it was just like a case of, um, line, 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 give him his line, he obviously forgot his line, anybody, um, okay, okay, we'll just shoot the movie around that. That's pretty much my brief blurb of, of what I thought of Drive. 
If you're curious about my full review, it'll be in the description below. I've got a few other things planned during the time that the paper is taking its break. In addition to the reviews, I've just got to hammer out some details first. But yeah, if you're still watching after the credits, then, well, why are you still watching after the credits? I mean, seriously, click on something else. There's nothing else here.